are continuing to track Debbie just upgraded to a hurricane as we speak as it continues to strengthen over Florida's West Coast. Let's take a look at this video. Uh, this is on 45th Street FPL working to get power outages restored for customers right now on FPL's website. There are 302 outages in the area and now Chief Meteorologist Vita is here joining us. Now you took that video Vitas, and tell us what else you're seeing as we've just learned that Debbie has been upgraded to a hurricane. Yeah, our effects on this side of the state have been more minimal. We've had some branches down, some little bit of flooding here and there, but it's been much more substantial on the western half of the state where we have hurricane warnings that are extending up around the Big Bend region, then tropical storm force winds that are beyond that to the south. But it looks like it has been updated. We're looking at an uh, advisory here for Hurricane Debbie, uh, looking at it moving north at 12 miles per hour, wind 75 miles per hour, gusting to 90. As you can see it really gaining a little more strength on those very warm waters. Those are in the upper 80s before it makes landfall up there in the Big Bend region. So category one hurricane now 75 mile hour winds going to be making that landfall overnight in through tomorrow morning. It's going to slow down as it gets up into parts of the northern portions of Florida and kind of hang around over South Georgia and having a hard time moving north because there is high pressure blocking it. So it's going to be dropping a lot of rainfall over South Carolina, Georgia and North Carolina for the next few days. So there's going to be a flooding issue. This will be a really a flooding storm. So we're looking at the hurricane warnings here and the tropical storm watches all around that uh, heading into the northern portions of the state. Six to 10 foot storm surge we can expect to see up around the Big Bend region further south, looking at about three to five feet uh, storm surge. So that is going to cause a lot of problems for flooding as we continue to see this move to the north, making that landfall, creating a lot of wind damage, but then also bringing a lot of water inland. I'm going to time out how that's going to play out and how much rainfall they can actually see coming up in just a few minutes. And this is video from Tampa Bay. You can already see the rough waves hitting the St. Pete Pier earlier today. President Joe Biden officially approving a disaster declaration for Florida ahead of the landfall. Meantime, the city of Fort Pierce offering free sandbags for residents in preparation for storm season. Stations are set up at Dr. MLK Jr. Dreamland Park, Pioneer Park and JC Park. These locations are open from dawn to dusk. Residents should bring their own bags and shovels. Well, once again, Category 1 hurricane as it makes its way up towards the Bend Bed, Big Bend region. You can see it really gathering some strength there. Moving north at 12 miles per hour, winds at 75, gusting to 90. And, of course, the current track is going to continue to take it up over the Big Bend region overnight into early tomorrow morning as a Cat 1. And it looks like that will be affecting Tallahassee and areas up for, especially on the northeast corner of that storm. Continue to move north into South Georgia, but it's slowing down and going to have a hard time going north into the Carolinas over the next couple of days because it's running into high pressure, which is pretty much blocking the forward motion of that storm, and that's going to be a major rainmaker and flood maker. So we can see the warnings here. These are the tropical storm advisories and then hurricane warnings here as we continue to see that move in north at 75 miles per hour winds surrounding that storm. Six to ten feet of storm surge up around the Big Bend area, south of that three to five and then a little further inland around two to four. So it definitely is going to drag in plenty of water and there's that high pressure that's blocking the motion to go north. So as we go through the hour by hour, by lunchtime tomorrow, we're seeing that storm sitting up towards uh, I-75 and I-10 corridor getting into South Georgia and there's a lot of deciduous trees up there, pine. Well, there could be a lot of uh, tree damage up there, a lot of flooding too up into Savannah, getting into Charleston as we get into 7 a.m. on Tuesday. So anyone going north on I-95, this is going to call us a lot of problems and standing water and flooding areas. So definitely you're going to have to really check ahead doing any type of traveling along I-95 as there are going to be issues there. So we're going to see rain to come across the area. Plenty of it. We're going to see as much as anywhere from uh, about 8 to 10 inches in some areas. Look up around southeastern Georgia, up around Charleston. We're going to get a lot of rainfall getting out of this system and it's going to continue to cause a lot of problems especially with uh, low-lying areas and poor drainage areas and urban areas areas that could get some significant flooding from Jacksonville up to Charleston. Lauren, and we're seeing certainly the effects of it this morning. Yeah, we've got some of those outer bands continuing to come through. We had some storms throughout our weekend, the outer bands, and we're still seeing that as we get the morning started. So here is Debbie, and then we've got this other wave that's uh, across, going to be moving across parts of the Caribbean. Low development chance there. I don't expect that to turn into anything. It's going to likely stay to our south. Winds are at 80 miles per hour. It's getting closer to landfall. Hurricane Center now just doing hourly updates for us. It's going to stall, though, off the coast of South Carolina on Wednesday. This is going to be a big issue for coastal South Carolina. 
uh, parts of Charleston could see up to 20 inches of rainfall when uh, Debbie is through because it's going to be stalling. It's going to obviously create a big problem. There's really bad drought across the mid-Atlantic, so this is all beneficial rainfall, but 20 inches of rain is too much, and South Carolina doesn't hold water very well. It can flood during a regular afternoon thunderstorm. We've got hurricane warnings still in effect across parts of the state, and those tropical storm warnings then extend further north through Georgia.